the prince took the Buddha Bhikshu and jumped into the boat brought by Murugayan. As fast as he jumped, the little boat rocked. For a moment it looked like it would topple over. Murugayan tried to save the boat from capsizing. Murugaya! Leave the boat from now on. Leave for Anamangalam Palace. Pani's Selvar shouted in a loud voice. Murugayan did not hear what he said because of the noise made by the storm which had reached its peak at that time and the sea which was raging in the storm. However, knowing the prince's wish from the look on his face, Murugayan began to steer the boat. It was very difficult to steer the boat without bumping into the Mandapa Shikras and Buddha statues that surrounded the Sudamani Viharam. Murugayan was used to sailing the boat in the middle of the sea in strong storms and whirlwinds, so he managed to sail very smoothly. The prince was surprised to see it. He thought he could help him a bit. But the Buddha was reluctant to let go of his hold on the Bhikshu. Accordingly, suddenly Bhikshu tried to free himself from the prince's grip. At that time the boat was going near the statue of Lord Buddha. Now the sea flood had risen up to Akila's eyes. There is no doubt that the idol will be full in a few minutes. The prince held Bhikshu tightly. The look on his face showed that the Bhikshu was amazed at the strength in the arms of the prince who looked so soft to look at. If there is manure in the chest, it seems that there will be strength in the body. A body that was thin after so many days of secretion. The boat passed the statue of Buddha. Bhikshu kept looking at the print that was drowning. The idol soon disappeared. Pikshu's eyes welled up with tears. Prince! What have you done? said Pikshu. Knowing what he was saying from the movement of his lips, the prince leaned close to the Pikshu's ear and said, Swami! Shouldn't I ask that question? What dare you do? said. Prince! This temple has been here since five hundred years ago. Even during the time of the great sage Dharmapada. The Pallava emperors, the heroic Sivas, left it untouched. Such an ancient temple has been submerged before my eyes in my time. This brickwork temple cannot survive this ocean flood. Flood. After it dries up, only a few small walls remain. Why should I be the only one alive after the Viharam is gone? Said Pikshu. If the Vihara collapses and is destroyed, we can rebuild it again. If it is the Lord Buddha's will, I will rebuild it myself. If they are gone, can't I bring them back? Said Prince Aromas Hivarmar. They could not continue their discussion because of the noise made by the sea and the storm. And the grotesque sights they saw on all sides rendered them speechless. Large canoes with broken sails and small fishing boats were coming from the sea towards the shore. Many of them washed ashore, crashed into buildings crashed into swaying trees, and crumbled into hundreds of pieces. The roofs of the houses were blown away by the strong winds and fell into the flood. Some other roofs were floating. In some of them men were struggling with great difficulty. They were shouting loudly. Huge trees snapped in the wind. Some of the broken trees floated away. Some people tried to escape by holding on to floating trees. Goats and cows floated screaming in the flood. Seeing such grotesque scenes, the prince and the Bhikshu were distraught. The thought that there was nothing they could do to help in the situation added to their agony. Murugayan steered the boat carefully without looking this way or the other. Sudamani Viharam was located along the beach at Nagaipatanam. From there the canal continued towards the south for a short distance. Then it went southwest till Arukatham, and from there it turned again and went straight in a southerly direction. It was at the end of this second turn that Anamangalam Palace was located. When the boat came near the Nandi Mandapam in the middle of the road, not only was the entire Nandi flooded but the flood reached the edge of the upper Mandapam. Three-fourths of the trees in the coconut grove spread on all four sides beyond the hall were broken by the wind. Bats danced in the tops of the remaining trees like giddy ghosts. Some of those bats were carried by the wind and fell far away. At the top of the Nandi Mandapam, a calf that had been separated from its mother somehow came and was being cuddled. It woke up scared looking around. The body often shivered. Its legs were shaking. The calf's cry of mother fell lightly on the ears of those who were going on the boat. 
alas! Sin! What will become of this calf separated from its mother? Just as the prince was thinking that, a huge coconut tree suddenly broke and fell at the back of the hall. If it had fallen slightly to the front, it would have landed right on top of the calf. Due to the speed with which the tree fell, a big wave started in the water and jumped up in the hall. The already shivering calf could not handle the wave and stumbled and fell. It was tossed and tossed by the tide from the top of the hall. The prince was still holding the Buddha Bhiksha by his arms. When he saw the calf being pushed from the top of the hall, he let go of his hold on the Bhikshu, shouting AGA. Bhikshu immediately jumped into the flood. The boatman Murugayan left the oar in the boat and held the prince tightly. The prince looked at him angrily and said, Leave it. He waved his hand. By then Bhikshu had swam on two legs and firmly grasped both the calf's four legs. A calf's natural desire to survive is used to keep only its head above water. Piksha grabbed the calf and came towards the boat. The prince helped him by giving him a hand. Together they first put the calf in the boat. Then with the prince's help Acharya Piksha boarded the boat. The calf, which had somehow been managing all this time, played a game and tripped and fell flat. Fortunately, it landed on the inside of the boat. Piksha sat next to it. He took the calf's head on his lap and started stroking it. Gurudev! Did you see Lord Buddha performing prana sacrifice by holding the sharanas of Lord Buddha in Sudamani Vihara a little while ago? If you had done that, could you have saved this doorless life now? Asked the prince. Sir, I am grateful that you have prevented me from committing the crime I was about to commit. Yes, I am relieved to have saved the life of this calf. Even if the Sudamani Vihara collapses, I will not worry so much anymore said the Bhikshu. Acharya! How do you get peace of mind by saving the life of a calf? How many lives are suffering today due to this storm? How many thousands of people, men, women, children, old people, are suffering? How many homeless animals, sheep, cows, horses, birds will lose their lives? Remedy for all these sufferings? What? asked the prince. Sir! We can only do what we can. There is nothing more we can do. We have no power to stop nature's productions. Can we control the storm? Can we stop the torrential rain? Or can we make it rain? Can we stop the sea from raging? Ah! Beyond the seas I have seen volcanoes spewing fire in the lowlands, earthquakes tearing the earth apart. What can we do about it? We can only help the suffering life before our eyes. O oh Lord! Why do natural phenomena occur? Why do storms and earthquakes occur? Why do pestilences occur? Who is responsible for the suffering they cause to people and other beings? We cannot prevent natural phenomena. But neither can God? Why does God not prevent such phenomena and watch the living beings suffer because of them? Asked the Prince. Pawnee's wealth. The sages and sages have been trying to answer the question you have just asked since the beginning of time. But they did not satisfy everyone. That is why Lord Buddha did not say anything about God. He did not go into the research about God. Help others. Try to relieve the difficulties of others, in that effort. Only then will you attain true happiness, and from that you will attain the state of nirvana beyond all sorrows and pains. Lord Buddha taught, said the Bhikkhu. The boat was turning west from Nandi Mandapam and heading towards Anamang Alam. Pani Selvar's heart was deep in thought. He mentally compared the religious doctrine of his forefathers with the Buddhist religious doctrine published by Bhikkhu a while ago. Saivism and Vyashnavism also emphasize the duty of helping others. There is also a great saying charity is the body. But at the same time, our forefathers have insisted on the duty of faith and devotion to God. They have worshipped God as Samharam Murthy Rudra and Karunamurthy Mahavishnu. Giving God the form of Jaganmata and at the same time as Umadavi in the form of love, can Kora be the formidable Ranapatra Kali? Why not be? A mother hugs and caresses her child with love. Sometimes she gets angry and hits. 
sometimes the child does not understand why she is hitting. But can a battering mother be said to have no love for her child? At dark the boat approached the Chola mansion at Anamangalam. The boatman saw that the raging sea did not reach the mansion. Murugayan stopped the boat by taking it to the ornamental staircase near the palace. Even then nature was somewhat kind to the boatman. Although the sea was raging with a great storm, it was not only rain that began to fall. It stopped with a small splash. It was only after the boat stopped at the side of the palace that the heavy rain started to fall. The palace guard of Anamangalata stood at the front gate of the palace holding a torch in his hand. He was talking to people from the surrounding areas who had come running for shelter that night. When he saw a boat coming and stopped at Padadura, the guard picked up the torch. Pawnee's Selvar's face caught his eye. Immediately he forgot everything else and ran towards the stairs. By this time the prince and Acharya Bhiksha came down the stairs from the boat. They caught the calf and dropped it on the shore. The guard fell at the prince's feet. He caught him and stopped him. The torch in the guard's hand fell into the canal and burned for a moment and disappeared. Prince! I was worried about Sudamani Viharam. It is very good that you have come here, said the guard. Do you know that I am in Sudamani Viharam? I know, sir. I found out when the younger Brady and the princess of Kajumbalar were there. The younger Brady ordered not to tell anyone and left. You still have to do it. Who are the people gathered at the palace gate? Those who fled because the sea had entered the coastal villages. They were asking for a place to spend the night. Then you came, I will drive them away. No. No. Give them all room to stay and sleep and cook and eat as long as they have food. But don't tell them about me. Your torch fell into the canal and went out. Take us some other way to the palace loft. Said the prince. It was right when they entered the palace when the stormy wind and heavy rain started to pour so.